Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Clinic. This is Dr. David Drozek. Are you ready for health? This session is on reading labels and shopping smarter. If this is the first session that you found of ours on YouTube, you might want to go to our website, the Lifestyle Medicine Clinic, and take a look first at fill up with fiber and be like the blue zones before you do this session. However, this session as well might be helpful uh, just as a standalone. We'd like to start with our featured recipe. This is burgers and fries, modified from Jeff Novick's Fast Food Basics. You can get the recipes on the sidebar on the left on the website. Uses all plant-based whole food ingredients. We start out with some kidney beans. These can be canned. If you're looking to do them quickly, ideally you want kidney beans that have low or no sodium. If you can't find those and you're going to use canned beans, at least rinse them very well. Or if you have more time, you can start your kidney beans from scratch. Get the dried bulk beans, soak them, cook them, and you'd be ready to go. Then you add in some rice. Again, if you're looking for the quick 10-minute recipe, you can have some rice like the boil and bag brown rice or Success Instant Rice or whatever brand that's ready that's pre-cooked. Or you can get the bags of dry rice. Ideally, you want the brown rice, which is a whole grain rather than the white rice. But if you, if you have white rice, you can use that. You can put that in a rice cooker or a crock pot or do it on the stove. Uh, by the directions and just a quick healthy hint if you make extra rice do the whole package and make extra rice you can freeze it away in small uh, Ziploc freezer bags or storage containers and put it in the rice and then you or put it in the freezer and then you will have rice ready when you need it the recipe also adds some tomato product it can be the uh, diced tomatoes and it could be tomato sauce or quite a variety of things that you can do. And then the Quaker Oats or whatever brand you have of uh, oats to help absorb the water and hold the burger together. And then you want some salt-free seasonings like Mrs. Dash or whatever other variety you have. You want to mash those beans up either with a potato masher or you can do that with a fork and then mix them all together with the other ingredients in a bowl. You can then shape them into nice patties the size you would for hamburgers. If you have the time you can stick those in the fridge for about 20 minutes or so and they'll firm up as the the oatmeal absorbs more of the water and they kind of gel together nicely. If you don't, you can go ahead and use them right away if you need to get moving on with preparing the food. Then you can do them however you like. You can do them in a skillet, you can bake them in the oven, you can do them on a grill. And then to go along with those are the healthy potato wedges. You can have sweet potatoes or white potatoes. Cut those up into wedges like this. Put those in the oven under the broiler, use some healthy no salt seasonings, whatever you like on there. It can be something that's hot or something that's uh, milder in flavor. And then you eat that burger with some other fresh veggies on a whole grain bun and you've got a great healthy meal. Bon appetit! So normally at this point, we ask how you are doing. And I would encourage you to take a moment if you've been following along and doing the lessons in order. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. I hope you're making some applications of the things that we've been teaching, increasing the fiber in your diet, limiting those animal products and processed foods, and that you're achieving the success that you're hoping for. Well, today we want to focus a little bit more on shopping and label reading. Obviously, you have been shopping already and maybe reading some labels, but not maybe the way we're going to encourage you to do that. Remember, we're encouraging you to eat more plants, fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, and save those animal products and processed foods for special occasions, minimizing those, not having those every day, but maybe at the most one or two days a week, but most of the time eating 
the best foods. The best foods are those without labels. They're those bulk foods and the foods you find in that produce section. Remember, the recommendations are five to nine or even more servings of fruits and vegetables a day. At least one helping of green leafy vegetables a day, and that includes really cauliflower and broccoli as well as kale. So those kind of things and cabbage are all, all count in that for your green leafy vegetables. So let's turn our attention to label reading. You can find label reading guidelines on the sidebar. They're also in the packet of recipes that uh, occur on the sidebar on the left as well. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take these steps. First, we're going to look at fat, total fat, as well as the bad fats, the sodium content or salt content, the ingredients overall, and then sugar and fiber. So the first step, if we want to look at this label here, as, they, as we follow them down, the total fat should be 20% or less of total calories and no unhealthy fats, which are the saturated fats or trans fats or cholesterol. The sodium density should be roughly equal to your calories. You want to read the ingredients and eliminate any ingredients that obviously aren't healthy for you. And the sugars, you want to keep the sugars total less than 5% of the calories, unless they're naturally occurring sugars. In the fiber, we want to see whole grains, and ideally the carbohydrate to fiber ratio less than or equal to 5. We'll walk through all of those together. So first, starting out with the total fat, you want it 20% or less than the total calories. And fortunately, that's right there on the top. And here you can see this ratio, 3 divided by 68 and times 100%, and that's 4.4%, obviously well below 20%. So this, is, this recipe is good concerning fat content. And you look down, there's no saturated fat, there's no cholesterol, there's no trans fats. And you look at the calorie to sodium ratio. And this one's pretty good. It's about one to one. I know it's not exact, but the sodium's not three times the calories, as you'll see in some of the labels we look to. So this is pretty, this is pretty good. Then you want to look at the ingredients. Can you easily pronounce them? Are there any of those unhealthy fats in particular from animal fats, palm oils, or coconut oils? Is there sugar in the top three, such as dextrose, fructose, maltose, sucrose, honey, and molasses? Are the grains whole grain? And they'll say so, if, especially if it's wheat, like this one, it'll say whole wheat flour. Then you notice there's sugar in the top three. There's also molasses later on down below, and then honey, and then there's also salt added. So are there camouflaged ingredients like whey and casein, which are also animal products that you want to minimize? And then in this label here, you can see the preservatives, the ammonium sulfate, things like that that are added. That ideally, you don't want those if you can avoid them. We look at sugar. You want that total sugar percentage of calories to be less than 5% of the total calories. This one you'll need to do a little math. It's not done for you on the label. Since this one in particular doesn't have any, we're okay, but you'll see subsequent labels that we look at. And then you want to look at this carbohydrate to fiber ratio. You want that less than 5% if possible, or less than 5 if possible. And here you see it's 4.33. So that's pretty good. That means there's plenty of fiber and water uh, in this item, and it's probably pretty good to eat. So let's look at some actual labels. So here's some Kroger black beans. And what's the first step? Look at the calories and the fat. So 110 calories and 10 from fat, so that's only 9%. That's pretty good. We can, we can move on to the next thing. 
the unhealthy fats. And you see there's no saturated fat, no trans fats, and no cholesterol. So we're doing pretty good with the beans. Next step, how about the sodium? So the calories are 110, but look, the sodium levels, 370, more than three times. And you look at the ingredients, and indeed, there's salt added. So that's less than optimal. But if that's all you have, you use those, you rinse them as best you can. But you try to find beans that are lower sodium if possible. Next step, we look at those ingredients overall. So we've got prepared black beans, water, and the salt. If they left the salt out, it would be perfect. Next step, sugars. So here we look at the sugars, and again, they're zero. So we don't need to do any calculations at this point. Next step, we look at the carbohydrate to fiber ratio. And if you look at that 19 divided by 7, it's 2.7. So beans definitely fit within that ratio that we want. And they're, these beans are good except for the sodium. Is there a better option? Well, yes, there is. Here's the Simple Truth organic beans that you can get from Kroger. And if you look here, that sodium to calorie ratio is about one to one. Look at the labels. They've still added sea salt, which you don't need. Sea salt, Himalayan salt, pink salt, it's all sodium. You don't need it. The others are more of a gimmick. But here's the best. No salt added, no salt at all in the ingredients, and the sodium is less than 10% of the calories. This is what you're looking for, ideal if you can find it. Let's look at another label, one of the American favorites, macaroni and cheese. So step one, look at the calories from fat versus the overall calories. Now this, because you, the macaroni and cheese in the box isn't finished, you can look at it that way or you can look at it as prepared. So we'll look at the finished product. And if you look at 400 calories and 170 from fat and you do that calculation, wow, 42.5%. We're way over that 20%. And then you look at the unhealthy fats and what do you see? Uh, saturated fat from the dairy products, cholesterol from the dairy products, uh, not great. Next step, sodium. Wow, again, 570, uh, quite a bit of sodium in that. Um, it's not two to one from the completed product of 400 calories, but it's still up there pretty good, and that's a whopping sodium load, um, as it is a whopping calorie load for the amount of food you're eating. The next step, look at the ingredients. And they have enriched macaroni product, which means processed. They've taken the fiber out, and it's not a whole grain. Plus, they've added lots of other things. They've got whey, milk fat, a milk protein, chemical names, all kinds of stuff in there that you really would prefer not to have. Next step, look at the sugars. So this has seven grams of sugar, and you're looking at 400 calories. So this one we do need to calculate out. So four calories are in every gram of sugar. So seven times four is 28. And if you divide 28 by 400, you get that 7%. So the sugars are higher than that 5%. So we want to, again, take note of that and realize that this isn't in our optimal range. Next step, look at that carbohydrate to fiber ratio. You don't really even need to do much math on that. It's 48. Everything is so processed. There's no fiber in it or minimal fiber. It just doesn't fit for us. It's not the optimal food, even though we love it. But let's look at some whole grain pasta by itself, without all the, the cheese and stuff on it. So step one, we look at the fat to calorie ratio, and that's 9%. So it's good. 
we look at the other fats, there's no unhealthy fats in this, so we're doing pretty well. Next step, look at the sodium. It's very low, so we're in great shape there. Then we look at what's listed. Whole grain, durum wheat flour, and semolina wheat. So some of the flour in this is not whole grain, and to be listed as whole grain, look on the front of the package, it says made with 51% whole wheat flour. So it needs to be at least 51 to be advertised as whole grain, but that means that 49% can be processed. So it's not ideal in that case, but it's certainly better than most. Next step, look at the sugars. So remember the two grams, we multiply that by four calories, that's eight calories. Eight divided by 200 gives us 4%. So the sugar level is good. And then we look at the fiber and carbohydrate ratio, and it's 6.8. It's pretty high, it's out of our range. So you wanna keep this into that quarter plate when you're doing the 75% of your plate with foods high in fiber and water, because this really is kind of low in fiber because of that 49% of the whole grain. If you can find a whole grain pasta that's even higher than that, great, grab it. But uh, this one doesn't, but it's certainly better than the processed whole grain. So the idea is pick the best that you can, avoid the bad stuff, do what you can to improve the health of the food you're eating. So let's take a look at some breads. Here's Nature's Own. Uh, this is a common bread. We see this in Kroger. I think Walmart carries it and many other store, stores carry it as well. Step one, we look at the calories from fat. You can see right there that the ratio is 10%, so that's pretty good. Good start on this bread. Uh, it doesn't have any of the unhealthy fats, so we're doing well. Next step is the sodium, and it's a little high, one and a half on the ratio. Could be worse, but then we look at the ingredients and look at that. It, it does have stone ground whole wheat flour, but there's brown sugar in it right up there near the top, and we'd prefer not to have any sugar added. Next then you look at the sugars and you actually calculate those out. Three times tw four is 12 to get your calories from the sugars. You divide that by 100 and you get 12%. So that's above what we would like, but that's those that brown sugar that was added to this bread. Step five, we look at that carbohydrate to fiber ratio it's five, so it's right at that borderline. So generally, this isn't bad. It's more, better than most. It's a bit high in sodium. It's high in added sugars, but it certainly could be much worse. If you look at some of the labels on white breads, which we won't take time to do, but you'll see this one's passable if you're looking for a bread. But if you're looking for a better bread or the best, some, something like Ezekiel bread, there's a new line out as well. Uh, they're in the freezer because they don't have any preservatives. It's a little bit more expensive. Uh, what we do is keep it in the freezer and take a slice out at a, at a time as we need it. And you'll find that uh, this is a heavier bread. You won't want as many slices of it, um, uh, likely. So, first step, we look at the calories from fat. And we've got 6.2%. So we're well below that 20%. Next, we look at the unhealthy fats. There are none there. We move on to the sodium. No sodium, nothing added. So this certainly fits so far what we're looking for. And then we look at the label and everything there is pretty healthy. There's no added sugars. The, the um, first ingredients are that whole wheat, 100% whole wheat. So everything is good in there, plus they've added some other things like lentils and soybeans. This is pretty good from the ingredient perspective, no preservatives. And then you look at that carbohydrate to fiber ratio, and again, it's five because it's drier. Um, so it fits in that quarter 
plate, so you don't want to eat too much of it, but certainly a slice of that along with uh, the rest of your food is probably pretty decent compared to other breads. How about crackers? Is there a cracker that you can eat? Oh, my favorite is wasa, and you can get these in most grocery stores, and they're great with hummus, guacamole, but skip the cheese. Uh, let's look at this label closer. So we start out with that um, fat, and we see that it's only 8%. Unlike many of the other crackers, it'll be high in fat. We look at the unhealthy fats. There's none there. We look at the sodium. It's a little higher than we'd like, and they do add salt to these, which I wish they hadn't, but they did. And, but it's not too bad. You look at all those other ingredients, and they start out whole grain, rye flour, wheat bran, pretty good. None of the preservatives in there looks good. And then when we look at the sugars, none added. And that fiber is 2.8. So it's high in fiber. This one fits the categories pretty well. How about one more? Let's throw some frozen broccoli in there just for comparison to see how this would look if we ran it through the same numbers. Step one, the calories from fat are zero. There's no unhealthy fats. Step two, look at the sodium. Uh, it's, it's equal, a one-to-one -one ratio. There's no sodium added, so that's intrinsic sodium in it. Step three, the ingredients, only broccoli. Step four, the sugars. Now, this might be surprising because two times four is eight calories, and eight divided by 20 that gives you 40% sugar, but this is the intrinsic sugar. It's not added, so that's just fine because the only ingredient is broccoli. And the last step is looking at that fiber ratio. It's two. It's great. Mm -hmm. Eat your broccoli. So let's take a couple minutes to just look through some of the things that we can buy to fill our refrigerators and our pantries with some healthy items. Uh, Kroger uh, is a very popular grocery store within our geographic area where I live, and you can get very inexpensively things like potatoes and onions and garlic. You can get sweet potatoes, plenty of great options there. Don't forget to try those sweet potatoes if you're not used to them. Uh, give them a try. They're really great in soups. You can cut them up like fries like we talked about earlier. Lots of great things you can do. Uh, use these instead of baked white potatoes. You might find that you really, really like them. One of the other things about Kroger that's helpful is they have their Simple Truth organic line of food. You don't need to have organic products. In some cases, they're likely better. Uh, healthier for you, but don't get hung up on the extra price on organic. Just get the plant-based whole foods. Organic is kind of a fine-tuning issue. If you can afford it, that's great. But some of these are pretty inexpensive. So we already talked about the black beans. You want to get the ones that are no salt if you can. But you can also get the bulk beans, which are even less expensive. And if you fix those, up and then you can freeze those like we did with the rice and have those ready to go in your freezer then you've got no salt added beans ready to go the no sodium seasonings are also there uh, and notice that a lot of grocery stores like Kroger have right next to the Mrs. Dash their own brand which usually is a, le a little less expensive and very similar in nature. So you can try some of those out as well. You can get some blends, but you don't want the ones with salt. Notice on the right the garlic salt. You want the garlic powder instead of the gar garlic salt. So be sure you pay attention to the labels a little bit. Cinnamon, great for things like your sweet potatoes and your oatmeal. And then be cautious with hummus. Because some of the hummus, like Sabra, which is a very common brand out there, has lots of extra oil. 
Uh, so read the labels, do the calculations, and look for the hummus with the lowest fat. In our geographic area, we've got one here called Oasis. And there's no added fats. Um, there's no added oils. It's just the natural fat that's part of the ingredients. So that's my choice when I go after um, a hummus. And of course, if you want some crackers to dip in it, the Wausau crackers, which we looked at, are a great choice. Then there's the foods that I call transition foods. They're processed and they're made to use as um, substitutes for animal products, but they tend to add salt, sugar, and fat to make them healthy. So read the labels. Just because it says that it's vegan or veggie and animal free, read those labels because there might be a fair bit of salt sugar and fat in particular the fat oftentimes used is that palm oil or coconut oil which are high in the unhealthy saturated fats so if you need these kind of transition that's okay tofu on the left is is fairly healthy and we have several tofu recipes in our book that you can look at and the bread like the nature zone that we talked about or if you can find Ezekiel bread and some of the newer brands that are similar to Ezekiel that'll be right there next to them in that freezer section. Again, read the labels. Be sure you've got something that's healthy. How about some energy bars or things like that? You've got to be careful. Lots of them say healthy, you know, health bars no animal products and things like that, but read the ingredients, read the labels. Ideally what you want are the bars that only have ingredients that are ap that are um, plant-based, no added salt, sugar, or fat. So this one is pretty good. Just remember it's going to be higher in fat because of the nuts. Um, it's going to have that higher or that higher uh, carbohydrate fiber ratio because it's going to be dry. Kind also has some of those as well. And look at the ingredients. They should be all natural ingredients without any added sugars. In our area, we also have uh, some other stores that a lot of uh, areas around the country will have some, but you may not have one in your area. But uh, we have a bulk food store sometimes there's food co-ops look for those in particular you can get some good deals on some bulk foods oftentimes they also probably have some unhealthy options uh, big lots and odd lots sometimes have some great opportunities they've got if you want some cold cereal the kashi goline which we've talked about earlier on in our first session is not being my favorite food but certainly better than the fruit loops and things like that and then you've got your uh, whole grain pastas and some granolas and Mrs. Dash. And then Bob's Red Mill cereals and beans. Great options that you can get. We also have another health food store. And you can look for these in various areas. We call it, uh, ours is the pharmacy with an F uh, in Athens by our post office. And again, they have some bulk foods and some other things that you can get. Sometimes they're a little pricey, but if you're looking for some specific items that you can't find elsewhere, some pretty good options. Uh, they have lentils and things like that there. And my favorite is you can grind your own peanut butter right there. So no salt, and it is the best. It doesn't separate. We get it, we get it eaten before it separates out. Some other things you might want to try are the nutritional yeast um, as a, a condiment. It's also high in vitamin B12. And that TVP, textured vegetable protein, which you can use as a meat substitute in your chilies and spaghetti sauce. Uh, your, your family won't even know it's not ground, ground meat or ground turkey. Aldi's is also a popular chain around. And if you shop there carefully, you can find lots of other good options that are affordable. Uh, again, they've got the spices, they've got the dried fruits, uh, they've got some canned goods that are well. Look for the, uh, the no salt added and the no sugar added. 
as much as possible, read those labels, and they do have a uh, pretty good produce selection as well. So we browse through there, and pretty much any grocery store, if you look, you'll find some things that are healthy. Again, in, at Aldi, they have another brand of hummus. Read the labels, find out what the fat content is. And they also have um, the almond milk. And on the almond milk, you want to get the unsweetened. Again, if you need it sweetened for a while as a transition, fine, but you want to get away from that added sugar and get just the regular almond milk or soy milk without that. And watch because some of them have vanilla added, which if you like it, that's great. Um, I prefer it without the vanilla. So it's time to write some SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-oriented. So for this session, and you can find a, gold, a goal sheet on the left sidebar if you're tuning in, if you go to our website, you'll be able to find that. And I'm going to ask you to then choose some goals, maybe like this. Fill 75% of my shopping cart with produce and unprocessed bulk foods, things without labels. <laughs> Read labels and 75% of the items that I buy, or if you don't have time, because that's time-consuming initially, but at least maybe at home, when you have a chance, start reading the labels on everything you use. And then you'll find the items over time that you want. And you won't have to read the label every time once you identify the items that are good. But you want to start increasingly to read the labels until you identify those products that are healthy. And then maybe 90% of the things you buy will have fat calories at 20% or less than total calories. Maybe that's a good goal. Or one that says 90% of your items will have sodium levels equal to or less than the total calories. So think through the things we've talked about, the rules, write some goals, be sure you share those with your buddy, ask your buddy to keep you accountable, and see how you do. Are you ready for health? I hope so.